My name is Mariam Kirolos. I'm one of the co-founders of a group called Operation Anti-Sexual Harassment and Assault, a group that uh, a movement that operates in Cairo, mainly in Tahrir Square and the perimeters of Tahrir Square. Uh, we were founded in November 2012 as a reaction to all the mob assaults that happened in Tahrir. Sadly, all crimes of violence against women have been a cultural practice to the extent that it has become a norm and people don't find that there's anything wrong with it. It's, sexual harassment is not criminalized in the Egyptian penal code. Rape is only defined as a vaginal penetration um, in an intercourse, like a sexual intercourse. So, uh, for example, I remember one of the survivors once told me if an entire train drove into my vagina, this is not considered rape. So rape with an object is not rape. Oral rape is not rape, marital rape is not rape, and since anal rape is not rape, male rape is not even recognized in the Egyptian uh, penal code. Violence against women has also been used by the state directly. For example, in the cases of March 9th, the quote-unquote virginity tests that were conducted on female protesters in the Egyptian museum. Later on in December 2011, we all know this image of the Niqabi woman who was dragged in Tahrir, stripped, uh, she was called by the Western media the Blue Bra Girl. We refer to her in Arabic as Sitt al Banet, which means the best of all women. One woman of the name of Yasmin al Baramawi, who was uh, raped for more than an hour, dragged for a very long distance. She was stripped, she was raped, she was put on top of a car, and people claimed that she has a bomb strapped on her abdomen so no one would come and help her. And this entire time, Yasmin had her, both of her hands on her crotch and this was the only part remaining of her pants. And the reason why I'm sharing her story because she came on public TV which is a revolution in itself and told everyone her story. I think that's one of the very few things that we won so far in the revolution is the number of women who are speaking up about their assaults and about their experiences. We decided to form Operation Anti-Sexual Harassment. At first, at first this was the name because we didn't know how large the problem is. And we were on the square on, um, on November 30th. And that's when we, we've seen how women's bodies are being used as a political battlefield in that matter and how brutal this is. Uh, basically what happens, just to give an idea of what the mob assaults are, we're talking about one to two to three women being surrounded by what can reach 200 plus men raping them, assaulting them, and in some cases, raping them with knives. Um, in January, on the 25th of January 2013, which marks the second anniversary of the revolution, of the start of the revolution, I'm sorry, um, we were on the square, and this for us was the worst case scenario because we managed to intervene in 19 cases, one of which a woman was raped with a knife, and it was just insane for us to know that this is how much they want to marginalize us from just demanding our freedom. The groups are definitely, there is a very organized factor within the group, but that does not neglect, the, we cannot neglect the fact that some groups spontaneously join the assault, therefore reaching the 200 plus men. Our group is formed of three main groups. The square group, which basically walks around in, in Tahrir and spread awareness of who we are, spread our hotlines, and also like steps to do in cases of mob assault, what to do and how to, to react in such cases. The second group is the intervention group. The intervention group is the group that actually goes within what we call the circle of hell. And our main goal is get the woman out. That's it. The third group is the safety group, which basically takes, takes care of the survivor post the assault. And that's by offering safe houses, cars for transportation, legal and, 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 and uh, medical assistance, whether psychological or physical. We don't call ourselves a rescue group. We just try to make the situation or the experience less horrifying for the survivor. I remember one uh, volunteer told me once, when I was very disappointed, he's like, we got them out when maybe they were raped, but we got them out before they were killed. And um, maybe that's more or less how we try to, to, to work. So in January, we intervened in 19 cases, and then later on, we knew of 186 cases a couple of months later. And those are the cases that we only know of. Definitely, 
the role of the group is extremely important, not only in like the super brutal violent cases, but also that our presence in some cases we intervene before anything serious happened. Some people asked about the safety of our team and many people, as I said, men and women, they got assaulted. A couple of volunteers got a brain concussion. Besides the fact that we're being fought, you know, they, people fight against us on the square, so we are attacked by knives, boiling water, sand, everything they could do so they can um, carry on with the crime, with the assault. What we're working on is extremely traumatizing. Our only push, our only fuel to keep on going is the number of women who just inspire us and keep on working with us and come back. And I, I'll give you just one last example of um, a volunteer in the, in the movement. Oof, a volunteer in the movement in November, on November 30th, the first time we actually operate in the square. She was intervening in a case to, um, to help another woman when she herself, like she got her out and then she herself became the target for the mobs. Another woman came to help her to the extent that she was pregnant, she had a miscarriage and she managed to get her out. A couple of months later in February, this volunteer of ours came on TV and talked about her experience only to realize that the next day someone on Twitter wrote to her saying, I finally found you. It's me who, who you were trying to save. Here's a picture of me. Here's a picture of my siblings, if you can remember. Thank you very much. And as far as I know, this girl is part of our group as well. And this is what keeps us going. I never forget this first woman I was with when she said, it's my fault that I came here. I'm never coming back again. And what I'm trying to do here, or what we are collectively trying to do here, is tell women, we know that this happened to you again. This happened, it happened to us as well. It happened to our volunteers. And it happened to the survivors who are still, you know, demanding, uh, you know, the, the downfall of the regime that's sponsoring such acts against them. Just to be positive about this, there are groups, there are many groups that have been formed na nationwide to, um, work on such issues, groups that are working on the ground. We're talking about young men and women risking their lives, their mental health, their vaginas, everything, just to tell women they're never gonna let, they're, we're never gonna let them, you know, marginalize us from our revolution. And in a way, the number of women that started to speak up about their experiences is just fascinating. I am so happy <laughs> that they are talking and this is this is something that only us would really know how revolution it's it's a very revolutionary act and we were always um we were always raised to to to, to act in a certain manner when we're sexually harassed even the word sexual harassment is 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 newly used we at first we claimed um or people used the word um which means an act of flirtation by this you're sugarcoating the, the crime. And we were raised to just walk on the street and if we hear anything that we don't like, we just ignore it and keep on going. And we knew that this is not gonna change anything. So we stop, we confront, and we demand our basic right as human beings to walk on the streets safely. We demand public spaces and we demand public spaces and protests even if they're against the government. In my opinion, my very humble opinion, I find that one solution for this is just, I always believed and dreamed of a strong feminist movement in Egypt that fights everything <laughs> that we're against, fights capitalism, patriarchy, racism, nationalism, homophobia, uh, the whole long list of, of, of things that we're against. The Egyptian revolution continues and without women and the resistance, I don't think the revolution will mean anything. And honestly, what keeps me so positive is Egyptian women, basically, and how they're resisting so much, because no one, as I told you, recognizes them. No one recognizes how hard it is, like their very own presence in a demonstration 
is a form of resistance. They've been trying so hard to marginalize us. And they know that if they stop them from going to protests, the next day they stop them from walking on the streets, the next time they stop them from, you know, working. And this is not going to happen. We'll keep on resisting from the last breath.